180 Firearms Training Podcast, joined by Mike Seifert and Grant Chancellor Madison. We are going to talk about moving with a PCC versus moving with a pistol or long guns versus short guns. So Mike shoots PCC. Grant shoots pistol primarily, but just started shooting PCC. I shoot pistol primarily, have shot PCC. So what happened with my movement classes was initially, as I wrote Smart Move, I had all of the research for movement with pistols. But at that time, I, PCC, PCC was very new in the sport. So the research on movement with PCC wasn't done yet when that book was published. So what I did was I got a group of good shooters together to basically have them test my theories. We had Max Lee Grandis, Zach Smith, uh, Junior, a few other guys that are really proficient with a PCC and just ran them through different drills, seeing what worked and what didn't. And now we've got it down to a science, which means smart move is going to need an addendum just for PCC, which will be coming. Yeah, I mean, it's very much its own thing. It's a completely different game, so. A lot of people do say movement with a PCC is the same as movement with pistol. I disagree. Well, I think it's very different. What do you guys think? I think it's very different too. Um, yeah, if guys say that they've never shot a PCC before and then laugh. Right. Well, that's that's, that's a lot of people that say things about PCC, haven't shot PCC at a match, or they have one and they just bench rush shoot it at a, at a range. Um, when you're actually running around at a match, it's, 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 it, to me, it's, it's opposite of a pistol. Now, I'll be, I'll be very candid. Mm -hmm. I, sh I shot a pistol for about a year. Um, so I, I am not a pistol movement expert, but I, I shot it enough that I kind of, I know what you guys are looking to do. And, and for PCC, it's, it's kind of the opposite, uh, like on a lot of things, like one big example of that would be, um, with a pistol, you're, you're trying to shoot targets on the way in usually. And with a, with a PCC, usually you're trying to shoot them on the way out. So usually you're trying to back out of a position with a rifle and, PC, and with a pistol, you're just trying to shoot your way into one. But, um, yeah, there's a lot another, of another, like another major example of how it's opposite is if you come into a opening between two walls with a pistol, you are going to engage the targets from left to right and then continue moving to the right. So you're leading, the gun is moving in the same direction that you're going to move. You're shooting left to right if you're going to go right. With the PCC, you usually don't have enough room to do that with the PCC. So instead, you're going to come in on the right target, shoot across to the left so you can pull the buttstock out of that opening if you're forced to go into it especially so you're actually shooting right to left where with a pistol you would shoot left to right yeah a lot of, a lot of things are, are the length of it you know it really really dictates what you have to do around the stage and and to shoot pcc you really need some solid footwork and you need to have solid rifle manipulations and and doing things like that where you come up to a wall just because like for me to, to lean or around something it, it's it's pretty difficult versus like uh, this is just kind of what i see and you let the gun kind of do its thing uh, and then, yeah, I mean, you know, pulling that buttstock over your shoulder and, and using that for your momentum is another huge thing that you can use with PCC that you don't really get with a pistol. Um, so I know that a lot of the pistol shooters like to pump their arms and do all that. It's, I, I know we had tried that when you, <laughs> came, when you were at Double Ego, and I, I just, I struggle trying to pump the, the PCC because for me, I like to keep it, I like to keep it balanced over my body and, and have everything as center as possible while also keeping it detached from my shoulder to have my shoulder be free to snap around. Um, a lot, yeah, a lot of P a lot of PCC is, is just movement and rifle manipulation. So your footwork needs to be really good. And you yeah, made a point, a good point with the PCC, you have a lot more mass in your hands than you have with a pistol and you can use that mass to your advantage, use that mass to propel you, to pull you out of positions. Go ahead, Grant. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of the stages also designed around handguns. So if you get a hard lean with a handgun it's it's a hard lean but with a pcc it's like really difficult to get out of that position especially going into into low ports yeah and sometimes you're even you're even holding <laughs> the gun just in your hands shooting a target you know like it's not even shouldered that's how tight some of the leans are so it's yeah. interesting sometimes you know and also from a start position with the pistol you want to absorb the draw into movement so typically you don't want to be standing in that start position engaging a target or you can take your draw time and just add it on to the end of your stage but with the pcc if you've got a target right in front of you and you are starting with the buttstock to belt especially if you have a laser you can yeah. just 
throw two at the target kind of right from the start without even shouldering it and yeah. then get the we gun We can talk up. about that laser thing. You know, I, that, that's allowed in PCC and so are big mags and there's a lot of rules. And I don't know if I necessarily want to change lasers, but I think that's a little bit of a, a cheap thing to do. Um, yeah, and, and, and a, a big piece of advice for PCC shooters I see doing, Keita just made a great point. Uh, she, she made me think of it anyway. When, when you're starting with your PCC, it says muzzle generally downrange. That means 179 or perfectly downrange, right? Like you do not have to be always straight at the back berm. So if your first target is off to the right, your PCC should be faced directly at that target. So that way you are ready to just snap it up to your shoulder. Or, I mean, if you have a laser, you do whatever you got to do, but uh, <laughs> you got, you're, you're going to get it up to your shoulder eventually. I don't know why you don't just work on that. I um, still but, haven't you know. gotten uh, an answer to that. Like having the laser and having it firing it at hip level, is that an uncontrolled shot or not? I still haven't gotten an answer. It, it is not. No, no, it's, 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 an aim, it's an aim shot, you know, especially if your laser is on your target. Um, my, I don't know. I, I just feel like, I just feel like it's kind of, it's chintzy. And I feel like one thing that people don't consider with lasers is that it's a perfect, perfect thing for an RO to call you on a 180 if your gun goes past it, because now you have a laser shining straight down exactly where your barrel is. And if there's like a lot, God forbid, there was like two cones that said, this is the 180 line, um, you know, and off the start, they saw your laser happen to pass that cone. Well, there's direct proof that you just broke the 180. So when an RO might not call it because he's not 100% that it was a 180 and it was like a 181. And you're not going to get DQ'd. Well, now he's got direct proof that that laser was on the side of the berm past the 180 line. So, like to me, that's another reason I don't like the laser. You know, but and and also maybe about... dot, dot confusion as well. Having a laser and a and a red dot, and now you come into position. Now you got two yeah. dots. Yeah, I, I don't have target. one. I don't. I've never shot with one on mine. I just think it gets in the way of my hand because um, usually I like to have my hand out on the handguard as far as possible. Um, so any laser that I mount is just in the way. Um, and yeah, I, I, I don't have two dots either. I, I just run one dot, no laser. So keep it simple. Taking one on the, on the start position from the belt, that would be more like for a single close range target, maybe five yards away. And it makes it so you don't have to stop there on the way back through. So it completely eliminates a position, but you have to start there. And yeah. it's not taking you any extra time because your barrel is pointed right at it. You don't even right. have to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Of course, no, it can be. And, I, and I, really, I really like what you said about the difference because when you're, when you're shooting a pistol, you utilize your draw in order to go somewhere, right? Versus yes. like with a rifle, I'm, I'm standing there staring at a target with my gun pretty much drawn at my hip level. Um, and I practice, I practice, you know, I have a light switch. So this is how I practice at home. I have a light switch that I'll literally stand 15 feet away from and just go from my from my hip to my shoulder, hip to shoulder, and I just work on getting the dot there. And if you have the talk, you know, the, your gun faced right at that, it just turns into your practice session. That's like, to me, that's where dry fire really comes in. But yeah, you, you take those. So like on our last podcast, we were talking with Dave Ankney and he was talking about stage three with an IPSC design. Well, you were starting staring at two targets and you had to back out to a position with two targets to your right. Well, every, every pistol shooter utilized their draw in order to back to that position and shoot the two targets on the right before they backed out on the ones on the left. Well, with PCC, I'm sitting there starting at the targets. I, you know, the laser goes off. I one, two, one, two, and then back out to the right. Well, as I'm backing out to the right. So I'm utilizing, instead of me drawing, I'm utilizing my movement time for me to shoot the first two targets. So like, that's kind of a little bit of a difference with PCC too, is that like, if you're standing there staring at something, I mean, take it and take it, you know, I mean, you have no time really wasting on a draw. I can get, I can, sometimes I've dry fire time myself in order to get a a shot off from my hip to the to the light switch in uh, point three. So I'm doing it in the buzzer time. Like you can do it super fast sometimes. Um, so you know, I don't know. That's a little bit of a difference. Grant, I don't know what you do with pistol on that, but yeah, no. yeah, pretty much the same thing. Yeah, combine things if you, as you can, but yeah, don't try and draw and shoot. Something. Well, would you ever stand? Would you ever? So like in that position, if you would you would you draw? Would you draw and back out on those two targets to get to the right, or would you draw as you're moving hard to get to the the two right targets? And then what if the pistol guys are doing is backing out of those two on the way out instead of I took them. Yeah, away. if they're two easy open targets, then it's main probably draw on the first one, and then as the second one, and as I'm engaging the second one, back out on that draw to give me a little bit of momentum to move, and then I can actually springboard myself into the next position yeah well i mean I, I've, I've shot with a few open shooters uh, and I, I stage planned actually at virginia this last match with a few open shooters and they you know there was a couple times on their stage plans that um they they definitely went they, their stage plan was completely different all because of the draw and that was really was a determining factor between me 
being aggressive and moving forward before coming backwards and then starting running backwards because they had to take their gun out. And, and so uh, that, that's definitely a huge difference between uh, shooting a pistol and a PCC is uh, your yeah. starts. For me, I would just draw and run to one side because if you're taking those two targets in the beginning from the draw, that draw time Wasting is adding time. onto time in your stage. Yeah. And also you're giving up an opportunity to engage those two targets on the move later on Correct. because you're going to be running right past them again anyway to go to the right or left, whichever way it was set up. It's a great point. See? Yeah. That's why you got to take key to class because <laughs> most, most, most people don't consider it that way. So, yeah. Smart. Yeah. You don't want to give up opportunities to shoot on the move and you can just haul yourself. <laughs> right. On the yeah, draw. I mean... I mean, I watched a lot of YouTube videos, like, uh, uh, like you know, JJ's got an efficiency video out there and all. Like, that's kind of how I, I started to really think about what I was doing movement-wise, which is why the first time I ever met Kita, I thought I was going to go sh show her some things. So I was like, I, I've been really thinking about this stuff in detail. But, uh, yeah, I, you know, it, it, just, just I don't, you got to take her class. That's, that's all I'm going to tell you, because there's a lot of little secrets when it comes to this stuff. And most people don't, don't even consider what they're doing as wrong because they come from a pistol and they start shooting PCC. And if you don't know what you're doing, you think you're doing it the fastest way, but you could really drop your times down if you just if you just kind of bear down and, and think about it as completely different than shooting a pistol. You know, it's, it's almost it's almost opposite, other than the fact that you get scored the same way. So yeah. So the first yeah. videos I seen Kita of my P PCC match, I was like, okay, well, you know, that's, like, that's not bad. I'm taking P uh, Kita's uh, movement class, okay with a pistol. Like I didn't think the movement was too bad. Boy, did she give me a bullet point list of things I did wrong and did inefficiently. Yeah, well, how did, how did your how did your manipulations feel, Grant? So you shot that one time, right? So you went to nationals and you shot when well, I know I, no, I, I know shot I don't two, want to I shot out, two I matches before nationals. Okay, yeah, and then how many state how many stages did you get through at nationals? I don't want to bring up bad memories, but it was like five or yeah, five or six. Okay, so you, so you have a little bit of PCC experience. Like, what? How do you how do you feel? Is it as easy as you assumed it was? before you had shot it the first time? Because to me, everybody, the, the big thing you hear is that, oh, it's so easy. And that, and, and <laughs> was it as easy yeah, as no, you thought? And now no, I'm sure no, no, it was no, no, not no. as hard as you thought it was going to be. But I mean, like, was it like, oh, this is like, I just shoot alphas all the time. I don't even have to aim. I just pull the trigger and it's alphas. Well, yeah. So I'm, I shot standard. So I got the major scoring with the, the 40 split and West. So I went from not only a handgun to a handgun scoring major down to a PCC scoring minor. Right, so it was right. a completely different different shift. So my first match, I basically just scraped the gun across all the barricades because I was bumping the, the muzzle into each barricade and, and also coming out of positions. Didn't quite get there. So yes, I dragged, dragged the side and dragged the optic and dragged the ejection port across it. And didn't break 180 though. Um, just want to point that out. So oh, yeah, coming out and then also also shooting shooting minor. And I'm, I'm used to, you know, go fast throw a couple of Charlies and that's fine. You know, they only, you only lose one point, but yeah, when you start shooting minor, you start losing two points, every Charlie it it hurts. starts to add up. And like, basically, well, I could have actually just mic'd this with the major gun and got them the same, the same hit factor. So also finding out that actually slowing down and getting more alphas was actually more beneficial than just going fast I, and throwing a couple of Charlies I, every now and then. I have a hard time telling myself to slow down. You know, I really do. Like I, it, I've seen it, I'm coming up with I've any seen. strategies. It's like, it's just, how do I get more accurate being faster? I don't know. <laughs> I got a hard time with that, but yeah, I mean, speaking of go fast, I mean, recently you saw on the meme, you know, I feel like sometimes spraying forward a target, like, you know, like I shot forward this one target. I am now a meme because I, I, I missed three of the, of the four on some hardcover, but I, uh, I just feel like most of the time with PCC you have so many rounds and, and if you're running by a target and you have a fast trigger finger, it's not, it doesn't hurt your time. It can hurt your score. Like I've proven. Um, but usually mm -hmm. if you're throwing forward a target from like six yards away or seven yards away, you're going to have at least two on there. So like to me with PCC, you can be flying by positions, just kind of sp not spray and pray, but almost spray and pray a little bit because, like, you feel like, look, what are the chances that I'm going to miss three of these four? Which I mean, it does. Yeah, but well, let's just look at let's just look at the math. You're what doing if it's a very fast target, and you want to do that. You're doing what 0.12 splits on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're basically doing what 0.5 of a second to fire four shots at that. Right, but at that point, I'm my movement is more my momentum is is going harder than if I took two slower shots you know i'm like i'm i'm running i feel like my momentum is 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 sped up a little bit faster so i feel yeah, like then yes, i agree with what you're saying cover, you do that on hard cover and then you throw four shots and get one charlie 
one was that time. really worth only, it? Only, only one time. That happened. So I <laughs> shot. I probably, that I probably shot. was a meme, though. I probably yeah, it was. It was. You can't even mess up once around these people. You know, that's all I'm saying. So, <laughs> but yeah, I probably did that to like four or five targets throughout my match, and most of it, I had two alpha on most of them, and and some of the some of them were wild. Now that's where I believe you got to be able to be calling your shots, and I don't think that's the difference between PCC or pistol. I think that's just a a dot thing. Like if you're not calling your shots, um, like you have to. You have to know if you're missing. So like that's why I'm spraying four because two of my Two of my first two probably are just they didn't look very good to me, so I'm just pulling two more. So yeah, if you can you do that and think about that like, quickly, right? But I mean, like, look, I missed the first two. What do you want me to do? Sit there and think about it, or do you want me to just shoot two more without thinking about it? No, so, like, I'm I want you to slow forward. down a little. I want you to slow down a little. Bit. Yeah, and I agree. And I think that's hey, I think that gets more of a shot. strategy. I don't think that has anything to do with pistol or PCC, but like you know, I think that's more just a mental thing for me. But yeah, I yeah. I don't know. I just well, feel like PCC is nice with a mag capacity over a pistol. I can tell you that. I have no qualms about shooting four because I know I have enough to finish. So, you know, let's also know. look at the pivot point with a PCC. You have your pivot point on your shoulder and this long gun. So your range of motion is like this as you're trying to move, shoot on the move, moving laterally past a target. It's much easier to drag those shots. Where with 100%. a pistol, the pivot point is right here and it's only this long. So it's 100%. not as much movement. Hundred percent. Like you're, you're more like, like your, your front hand on your rifle is more the pivot point at, to me. And so, like, if you can use your body, like, if you keep your own momentum going and keep your hand in the same spot to move your gun, that's why when you come into a position, you can kind of work around it this way. My hand never really moves out front. My body moves, which keeps my momentum going, and I'm just still hitting targets. So, like, you can kind of stay accurate that way. Yeah. yeah yes. I agree. Yeah. And that's something that you have to really practice because it's totally different from a pistol. Mm -hmm. yeah, right, yeah. Um, so well, Grant, what I, I are your actually, general I, I, impressions general impressions like yeah pcc is not easy um especially when the the stage is designed around handguns and they want to okay well, we want to introduce a lot of hard leans and a lot of tight corners into the Thank stage you. with a handgun well you yeah. do that when you take a 16 inch um barreled rifle into that stage yes it, it it's difficult it's really difficult and then i was doing the classic well <laughs> i'm going to shoot coming in to these targets because that's what i've done with a handgun all the time so i'm going to do that with a pcc and then you almost basically you just get stuck like you've used the pcc as an anchor and you've wrapped it around the the barricade now um so i did that quite a few times and then yeah it's dragging dragging the barricade with me on the way out was 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 fun um but yeah it it, it is a lot harder and i don't you know when you look at the pcc guys and they're not beating everyone and the open guys are actually you know beating them or some production guys are beating the pcc guys that's not okay. because PCC guys suck at shooting. It's because the match and the stage design is actually around being able to shoot very quickly through that position with the handgun, which you can't necessarily do with a PCC. And if you with a PCC, if you try and go that fast around that position, you're either going to get stuck, drag something, uh, smash your muzzle and break the 180, or you're just going to throw mics. No, keep going. So, I love this. This is so good for me because I hear all the time how <laughs> easy it is. From all the people that yeah, go no. to PCC, it's, it's, it's and this is really, so nice. I just you can keep going for five more minutes. Like how <laughs> how much harder is it? I love it. Yeah, it's not it's uh, not as easy. And the, the first thing you said, the first thing again. you said is my reason that I tell people like, look, I get that you say I'm shooting a a, a rifle at a pistol match, um, but that's exactly what the problem is with it. It's designed for pistols. Like it, you know, how hard it is to get some around uh, around some of these corners. Like. It, I'm slowing down. You're saving a second and a half here or a second on me because like you can just kind of like get in, put your hand around, go pop, pop. I have to do a drop step out. That's like the only way that I can get around this corner, take two good shots fast and then get out. Like, otherwise I'm gonna have to come in do like a little weird thing around the wall with my hands. Like it's slow no matter what you do. And, and yeah, and I feel like and people don't understand. They think that they don't move. They definitely recoil a little bit. It's not like the, the dot doesn't move. It's, it's not a, it's not a 22 LR, you know, which even those recoil a little bit. I mean, I've never shot a gun that, the dot literally stays in the exact same spot without moving even a little bit up or down when you when you pull the trigger. So like, yeah, you've never shot an open <laughs> an open handgun then because that that doesn't no. that doesn't really no, move. Now, like, but yeah, my PCC experience was a it was a stock PCC stock uh, GI null spec trigger and I was shooting one twenty four grain netto spec ammo. So it was pretty punchy. Um, that and like guys, you can I mean you can spend you know a couple thousand dollars and get a PCC that doesn't move, but. You know, look, the big thing to me, like you, that was your, that was the smartest thing that anybody could said right there. That the biggest thing for me with P PCC recoil is if you are shooting factory ammo, it's never going to feel the same as if you're shooting reloads. Like you need to be shooting something yeah. that has less less power than what you are shooting there because 
when you're buying a nine millimeter load, what's it made for? It's made for pistols, right? They don't, yeah. except for federal, they make a PCC, but even that comes out at 150 power factor. I've seen that chrono before. Um, so like, you know, all of it is pretty hot stuff. Um, and, and muzzle brakes, you know, when you're getting up around 150 power factor, the muzzle brakes are not really, I, I mean, they're working, but you're getting a lot more bounce than you think. So like to me, yeah. you should be reloading your ammo um, no matter what gun you're shooting because you're going to save <laughs> at least like 50% of the recoil. So. Yeah, well, that was it was a borrowed gun. And if I'm going to borrow someone's gun, I'm not shooting my ammo just because, you know, if I blow it up, I buy it. And, you know, Murphy's Law. But also, Glock, yeah. most of the PCCs are made for Glock 33 round stick mags. And my experience with those is they're not as reliable as people want to believe <sighs> that they are. I disagree. You, uh, uh, OEM Glock uh, G17 33 rounder, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, that's what I run. I think that they're beautiful. I have not had a pickup. I think that yeah, if you tune I've them correctly, the problem, the problem, I think everybody needs to go on to Josh Fralick's uh, YouTube and watch his Taylor Freelance uh, video. They have that. It's on their website. It says go to his video. Um, but if you tune the mag like that, then I have not had one issue. And I thank Josh so many times. I've actually recommended that video to so many people that have been like, hey, I'm going to buy those Taylor Free, uh, Freelance magazine extensions. Like, what do I do? The problem with a Glock OEM extension is that the bottom of the magazine has a little bit of a ridge in it because it's the bottom of the magazine. They're, you know, they're, they're not designed to put an extension on, right? So like, if you tune that magazine right, I've heard more people have problems with metal magazines of different brands, but I, 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 love, I love Glock magazines. I think that those G17s run great. They're cheap. Um, and if you tune them correctly with the right sandpaper and get the edges off in the right spot, I think that they have, they, I've literally not had one issue because of my magazines. I've changed. Yeah. Cause I was using, I was using untuned stock mags, which I think most PCC shooters would do because in IPSC, you only do the, the 32 rounds. So you guys obviously tuning mags to get more, more capacity out of there. Um, right. and also oh, we the just thing throw an extension you, on. That's all. We just put an extension yeah. on. That's it. Yeah, it's another time to do that. But yeah, but also the PCC, wow. it's got a it's got a metal mag release, right? So now you're wearing um the body down. So as as the Glock mag um tends to wear with a metal mag release, it starts to uh, present the round a little bit lower um towards the feed ramp. See, I'm I'm, I'm see now I'm like running a, I'm running a test here, dude, because like I I have been running the same Glock bodies now for like a season and a half. Okay. So like, and I have not changed the Glock bodies. Yeah. They're a little beat up, like where the mag releases, but they work perfectly every time. And those things going so smooth. Um, and, and like, I'm just, I, I, I don't want it to happen at a major, but I'm, I kind of want it to happen at a local where like, I want one of them to fail. I just want to know like, how long will they last for? Because I, I keep them clean. I take them apart and I wipe them out dry with a, with a nice microfiber before every major. So they're always clean, but like, yeah, I've used the same Glock body for a while now. I've just changed a, uh, and I haven't even changed the follower. I changed, I just changed the springs, and they they still run great. So, and I shoot a lot of matches. So, I, well, like, you you know you know what happens with with mags. They wait until that major match where everything's on the I know. line. Until oh, they, I know it. I know. It, but hey, I got <laughs> nationals coming up. I got nationals coming up in one week here, and I know I don't know when this podcast is coming out, but yeah, we are one week before PCC nationals, and I am not going down there with brand new mag bodies now. Like I, these things have run perfectly since i've you know got them so like well i'm not get a make it make, let's make a note like the week the, net, the week after podcast or we'll, we'll, we'll discuss with mike and like how do your mags work and we'll see yeah <laughs> we should we should, we should. <laughs> yeah i'm gonna be really but disappointed when it's the first time they don't work and i just said something <laughs> i just jinxed myself but yeah so that's fun. and also our yeah, firing pins firing pins tend to break quite a lot on those blowback guns um as well from what we've seen from the guys that run them here so maybe another thing i've been lucky with. do you want to do you want to like punch your yeah do you want to punch your sponsor maybe you haven't actually broken one i've i've been yeah well i mean i mean i don't know if it's just da vinci what they put i mean da vinci, my da vinci has literally run great but i and and even the pccs i had before i haven't ever personally broken a firing pin in the middle of a match so the only problem i've ever really had that was like serious that caused me to zero a stage was that my ammo that i had made i one of the if you guys have ever seen the brass cartridges that have like the little rim around like three quarters of the way up through it. And it's like, kind of looks like somebody like punched through it. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah, like to three. present, to prevent sick. Yeah, yeah, so I don't ever reload with those anymore. So if I ever find those in my once fired brass pile, I uh, that should be that exploded in my chamber. Sick. But I've never had an extractor break on my PCC yet. I've never had a, a firing pin break personally and ruin one of my stages. I've changed firing pins like preemptively, but I've never personally okay. had one snap on me. So yeah, I mean, the stuff I'm running is, I yeah, I like to buy higher quality stuff. I'm, but, uh, uh, you know, just the, the, the da vinci is i mean it's been top notch so yeah why don't you uh tell us about da vinci 
Mike. Yeah, no. Well, you know, we're we're actually as a podcast, we're happy to to announce that DaVinci has said that they were going to sponsor our podcast. So, you know, if you guys are interested or in the you know PCC market looking for something new, um, you know, check out DaVinciMachining.com. They're uh, DG9, it's the most reliable PCC on the market, and uh, we're looking forward to working with them. So, yeah. Well, from what I'm hearing, I'm actually going to start believing um, that because yeah, the the PCC that I run, the the, the Glock mags were constant state of problems and also we use a lot of powder coated um bullets here so they tend to be a little bit um a lot, lot more powder fouling than that in them so yeah they I, I took the gun at nationals after the stage three i actually had to take it apart to clean it to to get it running again and cleaning mags at the end of it because we were both so me and a guy were sharing the pcc um so basically we were doubling up stages on that and yeah i had to actually take that thing apart and give it a clean some lube now you guys were talking about how it's actually fairly difficult to shoot a PCC in a pistol match, bring in a rifle to a pistol match. I think any stage designer worth their salt is going to even the playing field between pistol and PCC in a match. And the way they can do that is by making the fault lines closer to the walls. So you really have to maneuver that, that long PCC in and out of positions and around walls. So what techniques did you guys use when you were maneuvering around walls? Do you want to, I, I could start Grant if you want. I, yeah, I yeah really, Mike, you go first on the And board. I'd really like to hear your thing on this too, Kita, because I have, a, I have a question about female shooters, um, which I see them. Mm -hmm. So for me, we'll get for to me, that. I, I, I always like to center the rifle <laughs> over my body weight, which Kita that doesn't necessarily like, because she says it's not using the momentum of the gun, which I could agree with. But I like, to me, like imagine if you took a stick and you put it on your shoulder and it's out here. Right. And, and you just, you didn't take it off and you tried to move around with it. It's very, it's very long and it's slow to, to turn it left and right. If you can center that over your body on your shoulder and you can snap your, you, you have room just to snap your shoulders and turn everything loose without having that thing attached to you. Um, you know, when I, I really like the shoulder over technique um, for most stuff. Uh, and then I try to, I try to avoid stage planning going, going right to left for that reason, because if I can, if I can plan a stage, go left to right, I can always just throw that gun over my shoulder and run that way. And it's the fastest way for me to do that. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, when it, doing a gun drag kind of sucks, but I mean, what do you, what do you do for pistol grant? Like when you're, when you're well, moving. Yeah. When you're moving, like I, I stick the gun over my shoulder here. If I'm, if, if I'm going to engage targets over the right. So with the PCC, I just kind of just naturally did that because then I can hold the gun down and basically control it. Um, as I'm coming out of that, out of that position. So I just, just did that naturally. Um, didn't even consider trying to put it under my body and, and, and try and pump with it. Um, yeah, definitely. I, I do agree with your right to left, maybe try and avoid it because if you're trying to grab the gun, maybe someone will DQ you. Um, yeah, it's a big, that's a big thing that I noticed when you got pistol guys, like pistol guys really don't mind going right to left because like to, for yeah. them to, to turn for me, for me to be going this way with a rifle. And then I have to like kind of stop and kind of my whole body. I have to shoot across my body. I hate shooting across my body like that. And I feel like if I'm coming this way, I could almost engage targets while it's over my shoulder if I'm running from left to right. So I, yeah, I, if I preferably it can go left to right, I feel like my movement is well, always I, faster. Yeah. I felt more natural moving right to left because I could tuck the gun under, under my shoulder here and kind of start punching yeah, with my arms yeah, while I'm that's, moving. That's where, the, that's where like a lot of, I see a lot of female shooters like either, either do, they go, they just go down with the barrel at the ground and keep it shouldered or they, they, they put it up and run with it like this, which gets a little scary for me on the 180. Like if you were out a match, like why, did, why is there, do female shooters, like, can they not get it up over? Or like, is there an issue throwing it around? Like I was just, I'm always wondering, cause I, I always see them do it the same way. And I'm like, I just, if you just put it up here, you can go so much faster. <laughs> well, it depends on the weight of the gun and how it's balanced and the muscle mass of the person carrying it and basically the body mass of the person carrying it. So for female shooters, a lot of times we have to actually hook, hook the butt stock under our forearm to have right. enough leverage to be able to hold it up. If it's really a really heavy gun, if it's lighter, then you can just grip it with the pistol grip and pump your arms just like normal, like you would with a pistol, yeah, but so with that longer barrel, moving to the left, obviously you have to kind of rotate it. So you can just like roll it over or you can use the drag technique or you can lead with the gun, which I like better. The drag technique you have to use when you're going from, from right to left. And you're going Watch Josh Fralick. 
Yeah. So that's another, that's, uh, that's one of the videos I watched that I learned a lot he, of stuff from that guy. Let me tell you what, he's a great dude. And, uh, you know, if you ever see him out at a match, definitely go up and say, hi, he's a really nice guy to meet. Um, but, uh, really helpful with PCC. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of his videos actually were what inspired me to get better with it. But, uh, and he yeah. has a very heavy gun too. And he's yeah. still, and he, he puts still more has weight the strength. To it. Not only is it a heavy gun to start, but he adds weight to it. So like, it's not heavy enough for that guy. That guy's doing lunges all and day And he's long. a big, <laughs> strong guy. So he doesn't have to do the drag technique. He actually has the strength to lead with the gun moving right to left as a right-handed shooter. Yeah. 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 I just, it's just a matter of, I, I feel like my, it, and this is where you got to go to your strengths. Like he's a big, he's a bigger guy, right. All that kind of stuff. And I feel like that goes back to your body type for me. I'm, I'm kind of a, like a little more lanky and I feel like that's where my feet are quicker. So I try to plan my stages to that. And like, to me, moving that way is dragging the gun is not slow. So like I, you know, some people have to do different things for their body type. I could see that, but like what as a as a you're a movement coach like you have female pcc shooters that take your class or yeah yeah and so like what do you what do you teach them when you're when they're there like do you, you tell them to do what they can do or do you tell them that they need to like do you tell them like look you need to be able to do this and do this if you want to be better or do you just say that's fine oh, i definitely teach over the shoulder to get around walls and things like that i give them a drill where we open a door and i just have them dry fire like they're shooting on the left side of the door throw it over their shoulder and then shoot on the right side of the door, throw it over their shoulder. Shoot That's a great the practice. The door. That's a great practice, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I would just, I, I don't know. I see a lot of people with their, their manipulations could use work. That's, that's my only thing. And then, you know, I feel like, I feel like ultimately if you can, if you can have solid footwork combined with like manipulations, it almost looks like you're dancing around a stage because like a step and then it's like, I'm going to step and throw this over and I'm going to step back in and it comes back out. And like, everything just kind of looks like it pieces together really nice. Um, and if you so ever, if, yeah, yeah, sort of like, I'm a terrible dancer, but I feel like, well, I, I feel like the only way I can equate it in my mind is like, when I feel like I had a good stage, I felt like I was dancing my way through it kind of. Um, but like, I, if, so to me, like if you're, if you're ever stage planning, I think Grant, maybe you can lend more to this with the pistol, but like, I feel like in your stage plan, if you ever have yourself stopping completely, like that's, you're not doing the right stage plan. Like you should, you should um, always be flowing through stuff. And like, you know, in, and that's where Keita had talked about, I think on our first podcast ever about like, if you're a match, if you, if you design stages, um, you know, you really should see how you, you see what the guy kind of wanted to do. And I don't think that there's any diabolical md out there well maybe at a local but i don't think there's any diabolical md out there that make you like literally stand there and shoot and then do a standing reload like that would be his plan like there's got to be a way to get through this where you can kind of flow better so like especially that helps with pcc because it's a lot harder with the mass in order to get that going again right so like i don't you, think we see that that much because i mean with all the divisions like everyone's trying to design a stage where even like a classic shooter will be able to shoot it without having to do a standing reload yeah. so i think yeah, there's a lot designs, more that but... goes into it than just than just what are the what are the open guys what are the pcc guys want because then you end up with stages with targets 100 yards away and that's just not fun for, no but i think with the rise everyone. of carry optics um, i think that i think that revolver and single stack and all that are, are are going away almost you know i think i mean i mean there's still I, I only know of a few younger people that shoot revolver and i know of only the a dying few, division younger people that shoot <laughs> single stack right so like it, the and then now you have carry optics that your gun's like 1200 pounds and you can you know you got good good mag capacity like i feel like the game is is getting geared more towards you know higher capacity even limited it's iron sights but it's still 17 rounds isn't it so like you know i don't know it's not it's not like everybody's shooting with eight rounds anymore it's a it's a very small number of people so i feel like matches are yeah tending to go yeah. away from designing towards them even though we have to stick to four target arrays for revolvers and single stack so or maybe that's where we, yeah, to challenge everyone, you kind of need to, okay, well, if it's mostly just PCC and, and optics guys, then yeah, let's, let's see how we can challenge them, you know, put a partial up there at 30 yards and have a no, flying and I don't, I don't, I don't think guys. that's fair. I don't think that's fair because I think that people that shoot production, like, yeah, I think that you should have hard targets, but to like put something specifically out there for a PCC, that's not at a strictly PCC match. I don't think that's fair as an MD. Um, I think that, you know, like you, you should be thinking about everybody and everybody should come to have a good time. And like, as a rifle guy, I'm not like, you know, I hope that we're not shooting three yard targets all day that are wide open, you know, that I like, like, but it, it, you know, there's huge, there has to be a good balance. And if an MD is strictly putting targets out there just for PCC guys and making everybody well, shoot them, I think everybody's gonna have a bad time. And that's why no, PCC I, is well, hated. a hard so. target every now and again, isn't a bad thing is when the match becomes every, t every stage is a hard target like that. Then, then, then that's not a, not a fun match. Well, what matches are we talking about? Majors or level or level ones? Which ones? Oh, yeah. Majors. 
All right. Well, majors, I think that there should be a challenge on every stage. It's a major, right? If you, if you want to go have fun and practice and, and not have that bit difficult of a time, I think that you should just be shooting level once. But I think that's the whole point of a major, isn't it? To test you. So if there's not something hard on every stage, that's when you have a boring stage. One of the well, this, challenges this I challenge like to throw in. Stage. I agree. One of the challenges I like to throw in for PCC shooters to even the playing field a little bit is having a close range target that's a tight partial with a no shoot, because then you really have to know your offset. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, you see a lot of PCC <laughs> shooters that are new doing that. They start smoking those targets. <laughs> you yes. gotta hold a little high on those, you know? And, and you know, it's, I, it's kind of a mental commitment when you're shooting at a head box only and you're trying to get an alpha and you have to hold your dot off the target. Like, like you're not uh, aiming on at the, the perf. perf. No, you're you're not, at the perf. You're, sometimes you are over the perf. Like if it's close enough, Depends you're literally not even, yeah. yeah, right. And like, you know, that's a, that's a mental commitment to know that the shot is going to hit low. And so it's like, you do not want to hit the no shoot, especially if he's on the neck and you're like aiming like at the low A box or right at the middle of the head. Like you might hit that no shoot. Like that's, you know. Gets so where do you sketchy. zero? Where do you guys zero your PCCs? Oh boy. Go ahead, man. Mine was zero to 25 <laughs> yards. Mine was zero to 25 yards. If I was, if I was running a hang in with an optic, I wanted a 15, 15 yards run about there. But yeah. with the PCC, it was zero to 25, and I kind of just stuck with it, and this is what I got to shoot. So, yeah, I, I, I dealt with a lot of, a lot of crap, uh, and, and this is where I learned from Josh again. Uh, you know, when I used to zero at 10 yards, and so people, oh. probably, <laughs> people are probably going to think, I'm listen, so listen, listen. What? People are probably going to Crazy crazy. person. I almost didn't even want to admit this, but so 10 <laughs> yards, right? What, what is your average distance shot in USPSA? Just, just what is it, Grant? Or even an IPSC, what's your average shot? Usually about five to 15 meters. So, okay. so where, 18 where's my, yards. Where, all right, so where's my zero? Pretty much right in the middle of that, right? So like now, now for me, my thinking with it was, and, and the only reason I have changed it since was because I went to a PCC match in Missouri, um, which had some like 35 yard, four or five inch plates, which was pretty difficult um with what a 10 yard zero because now i have to, <laughs> I have to under the target because it, you know normally you're holding over but like at a 10 yard zero or anything past 10 you're aiming low right so like yeah it, it gets it gets don't worry gets mike pretty, we're not laughing with you we're laughing at gets, you yeah and, and, you, and, you, and you should be but listen like at a regular at a regular uspsa match i maybe you should try it just one match just at, at, at a local that doesn't have any 35 yard like swingers or anything stupid like that like just try shooting with a 10 yard zero and you're going to see that everything is pretty much dot on which is which was a lot more for me when I first started, I, I was a lot more confident being able to say, Hey, what my dot is on, it's going to hit. And at a five yard target now, Grant, my offset is only an inch, but at a 10, at a 15 yard target, my, my offset is also an inch. It's just an inch low or an inch high. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So like I was an inch around my dot for, for 98% of our targets. I was an inch from within my dot. So like if I was close to a no shoot, I knew that I wasn't going to hit it. So, but now, so, but now, Went to a match and got crushed with some five inch plates. Okay. Cause I, I didn't know how low I needed to hold. I guess I, I, yeah. if, if I put more work into that 10, 10 yard zero, I think I could have done something with it. I'm telling yeah, but you, you. No, 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 Mike, but, you're doubling, you're doubling up the work because if it's, if it's 25, everything is hold right. low and hold it well, a little bit low. So, but now you're learning like hold low. Listen, on things, listen, listen. I do think, on things. <laughs> look, what, what did I tell you? What did I tell you? A couple of I like, I like to learn the hard way. Right. So I'm learning things the hard way. So I needed to go get crushed at that match in order to learn <laughs> that I needed to have, I now, I now run a 25 yard zero, but for me, the biggest, I was so scared of having a holdover and I'm like, well, this is stupid to me because like in my head, I look at it and I say 95% of our targets are from five to 15 yards. And if I put it at 10, 95% of my match, I'm going to feel very comfortable shooting my dot without having to worry about a holdover. And that was like, that was a big thing that took me a long time to get over until I saw, shot that match. But now I, you know, I can tell you guys that if you're shooting the holdover or something that if you shoot PCC enough, you just get used to it. And you know that like when you're right yeah. up on a target, your dot, like my dot instinctively goes to the top side of the perp or the top side of the cardboard on a headshot when we're super close. And like, it just, you, you'll learn those holdovers. And, and at a 25 yard, mostly you're, you're dot on from anything other than something that's two yards away. So. Yeah, so you learn one thing, hold over on everything until right. it's until well, it's that I spot. liked I liked the idea in my head. I was holding on everything. I wasn't holding over anything. I was putting my dot where I wanted the bullet to go. That was what I was thinking. And so yeah, I, I, I now I get you know, it seems dumb when you say you have a 10 yard zero, right? But like I'm telling you, just try it for one match and just get back to me at a regular USBSA match. Nothing crazy, nothing crazy. No Shannon Smith uh, 65 yards. <laughs> 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 so yeah. So all right.
What what else we got here? <laughs> so when you when you mount the gun, sometimes sometimes it can get stuck on your jersey or your shirt or whatever on the way up to your shoulder. Do you do anything like the melted plastic or anything like that? Nope. Mm. Nope. nope. I was doing I the practice whole shooting my light switch, man. That's all you gotta <laughs> do. You do that enough, and then like your shirt's not in the way. And I shoot with an untucked shirt, remember? So, <laughs> which is illegal. <laughs> I'll wait for somebody to, so, to tuck me in. I'm like, I'm not, <laughs> I feel like it's not like a, 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 I'm not, it's not an egregious rule I'm breaking here. I'm just trying to be comfortable. So if you really have a problem with it, I could do it. But I mean, like, just leave me alone. Let me have my shirt on top. <laughs> some guys do like actually melt the plastic on the butt stock so it slides easier up their shirt. Really? And you shouldn't for, be sliding it on your shirt at all. That's like recipe for disaster. Why would you want to get that involved at all? Like, <clears> I, I, so I, get, get I keep it pretty close, right? But like, it should be, it's a snap. Like, so some guys will do a, what is this called where you're kind of out of 45? I, I, I don't know what that's called offhand. You know, or it's, it's a certain position. It's low so, ready, I think. Yeah. So you have it on your belt and your gun's 45 up in the air and you kind of, and you, and you bring the stock up and just rotate around your front hand. I, from shooting indoor matches, we have to keep our muzzle down range because you can't go yeah. side and I can't go up. Nobody wants you to point at the roof in an indoor match. So I have gotten so used to starting completely straight like this and just bringing the entire rifle up as one unit. But like, it's not really a straight pull up. It's more like, it's sort of like a C kind of, but like the slightest C it's not. And I'm talking about just a curve, like, like barely enough to get off your shirt and away from anything that could get caught. And like, if you do that enough, like you'll just get that snap in your head. And, and I feel like your shirt shouldn't be a thing. I, I've never heard of anybody melting the plastic to have it slide better on their shirt. Let me just say that. That's all. They do. That was my point. Yeah, that, that's, that's crazy. So they, have, they have the wrong stock. That's all I have to say. <laughs> as a female shooter it's a little different for us we have some body parts that get in the way so our seat is a little <laughs> bit bigger valid you have to go valid. out and come back in and it's super obnoxious i didn't it's even think about annoying that. Ah, that, yeah. every time we mount the gun it's like don't hit my boobies <laughs> <laughs> ah yeah that makes a lot of sense so like when i drop my gun down or, or pull it up like yeah i that that probably is a legitimate thing like that's a definitely legitimate obstacle when you're trying to move around the pcc interesting mm -hmm. maybe yeah, i was doing the, the whole c thing but i was doing like a very like slam it into my shoulder kind of c so then the dot goes click 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 no no, no. So, See, and that's where that's where the dry fire of the pcc really comes in i mean I, <laughs> I i shoot my light switch so many times dry firing and like you know i just if i can hit that dot i know i'm in the a zone and uh you know you get used to what that really feels like and then you know i feel like that's one thing that i'm that I'm actually pretty good at. I'm pretty good at my reaction time on the buzzer and getting off that first shot. Like, I feel like I'm faster than most with the PCC. So because I practiced it so much because it was one area that everybody had to do. And when I started saying, how can I take time off and, and be more competitive against everybody else? Like I tried to look at things that everybody did on a regular basis. Everybody has to start stage, right? So everybody starts to stage. Yeah. So that's somewhere I can be faster. Um, stage planning and stuff, obviously everybody has their own idea, but. No one's ever won a match by being the fastest first shot. I'll no, say that. no, but God, I do want there to be a trophy for fastest raw time. Please, <laughs> some match director out there make a like a legitimate fastest raw time trophy because I feel like that's I feel I I don't know that to me that's like you're moving really good and you're getting through it. Now I might not have had the best hits, but like uh, you know I had I only had a I had like two mics on the whole day and like you know like like I don't know it wasn't terrible. Like I feel like I should get something for that. Like I was smoking those things. <laughs> <laughs> and I had three mics on four shots on a silhouette. So, you know, there's that. <laughs> for, for best meme, we'll give you that. We'll give you the, yeah, for the best, yeah, the best yeah. USBSA meme, we'll give you that. No, no, no. I disagree. <laughs> At what point are you guys taking a hand off the gun during a match with a PCC? Never. You Never always have it. two hands on. Yeah, unless I'm doing a reload. Um, and this is this is a big thing that I – one of my biggest pieces of advice I give new PCC shooters is you got to get the stock off your shoulder. So, like, whatever you do, just stop running around with the stock planted to your shoulder. You know, like, I, like I, you should have your hands on it. It should be, like, if you ever – It should be pumping. To, you ever learn to catch a football, you do it with your hands, not your body. Like, I'm not going to run around. You know, I'm just going to have my two hands on it. And that's what I use to kind of throw everything around. And unless I have to reach for a reload or do, like, a hand switch or something like that, like, Usually I've gotten to the point now where I'm shooting left shoulder. I'll just go from right to left with the same hand position. So like my hand doesn't ever come off. No. And I actually put, I'm, I've never seen anybody else do this, but I put a hook on the side of my gun in order to like <sighs> telling everybody my secrets here, but like <laughs> I'm going to start where, where you got like an X and you're reaching out with a gun and I can, I can just pull my, 
my my uh my grip i pull that hard with my right hand and i just like lock my hand into that that little hook that i have on the side so i'm getting my hand in the same position every time and once i'm there i do all of my movements and everything from that position and like unless the stage like i said tells me i need to go lefty or something like that but uh yeah once i'm locked in my grip it doesn't really change throughout the whole stage i manipulate from there so that way when i manipulate back into my next target i'm shooting and i'm my you know i'm always ready to go kind of that's cool. yeah well so me as a handgun shooter i mean if you think about it, the hands are always coming off off the gun so that's exactly what i did to the pcc my hand came off the pcc every time i moved and the pcc would come off my shoulder every time i moved because i right. want to use exactly the PCC as exactly 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 and yeah. so that's exactly pistol, what you take like, one hand you take one hand off when you run around right yeah i guess yeah. when you're pumped yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So again, always, that's like a complete the I move, the, hand, the hands are coming apart and the gun's either being used as a, as, a, as a tool to get me out of position or move around or I'm pumping with both hands. But like, unless I'm shooting, I'm, if I'm shooting, the hands are together. Unless I'm shooting, my, the hands are apart. So yeah, that, I guess that, if you got a gun drag, if you got to do a gun drag going back from your, you know, from front right to back left, yeah, then you're taking one hand off to do a gun drag coming back. But um, what about running down really range? Try to limit that. Limit that. <clears throat> what about oh, a no, long sure. movement running down range? Oh, with a piece of range, down range toward the target. Oh, took it all out. I tried to uh, put the the, the bus stock under my shoulder and then pump with both of it like that, which is probably what, not the the greatest thing. I probably should have left the the gun in my shoulder and just pump like that. But yeah, that's what I basically did was left hand off, gun under the shoulder, and start pumping, <clears> which <throat> makes sense with a handgun because then it's well, that's so that's so down. this is where if you guys are if anybody listening to this is switching back between handgun and PCC, if you're like, well, this is what I do with a handgun, I would you're probably doing it the wrong way with the PCC, you know, like, I don't know. I would, yeah, yeah, I, I agree, though, that you get, you would take one hand off for a pistol. And I guess, yeah, you would. Yeah, I, I don't know if I was running forward, Kita. I this is where you don't like what I do. This is like, you know, I, I, I just oh, it's just so natural for me to center it over my body just because I feel like I can there's no if i center it over my shoulder i feel like there's no rifle that i'm holding at all almost and i can kind of you have forward. two hands I, or one I, hand i can't pump my arms necessarily but like i don't like running around with with just holding the grip because then i feel like the the it gets very bouncy when you're running and i know you can pump it i, I just i haven't i feel like when we when we did that little technique i feel like it's just so ingrained in my head to do it the other way that it's going to be a hard habit for me to break to to start pumping and i feel like that is the right way to do it <clears throat> Yeah, yeah I've, we found that the fastest way to run moving down range for a long distance, covering a long distance before you shoot again, is just having the PCC go over your shoulder, kind of like this, and it's staying right in your line of sight, and you've yeah. got it up high. That's where going that barrel under drill. your shoulder. That barrel drill is great problems. drill for that. That barrel drill really teaches you to keep that thing straight out and straight back in, and it snaps it right back to the dot and snaps to the dot, snaps to the dot. So like that's yeah. Uh, well, uh, I do I just, that I just, just in thing. dry fire with a door. Mm -hmm. If you have an internal door in your house, just open the door and go back and forth around the door. Yep, yep. Yeah, I, I just wanted to control it. So like take it off, stick it under my armpit basically and just run down range with that. That's basically what I do because I want to be in control of it. So yeah, I can see how that would how that would be actually quite a bit faster. Yeah, yeah. over the shoulders usually faster under the shoulder techniques are more used for like room clearing defensive type of stuff and then in com competition shooting then we go over the shoulder yeah i'd love yeah. to do one of those tactical trainings i've never done a tactical class that's like room clearing and stuff and like i'm so competitive like doing the shooting and stuff like that that i feel like my i would, I would be so bad at it i'd be doing that <laughs> <of things. laughs> well traversing a room is like doing a dance Oh, well, then maybe, maybe it would be fun. I don't know. Like a uh, very, a very a slow, classic. I don't want to die dance. I got to get, I got to get all my Molly gear, you know, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> all my extra <all> <laughs> bags on my chest. I feel like a tactical. Get tension. your nods on. <laughs> yeah, right. 5'11 five ele five and crap precision right there. 5'11. <laughs> I got to get some 5'11 pants. <laughs> okay, cool. So what about suitcase carry? You know what I mean by that? Oh. I, I've been struggling on that. Yeah, so <coughs> I, I always held that in my in my hand, and I tried to hold it out front. That make, makes the dot super bouncy when you're holding it out there. And uh, like I don't know, I've been thinking about lately trying to hold it in my grip hand, like because now I'm I'm bringing the weight to the back with the PCC, right? So like I feel like now it's not gonna like when I shoot, it's gonna feel more like normal. It's just gonna be heavier when I'm trying to do a manipulation. But I 
Yeah, I don't know. That's a tough one with the rifle. Yeah, and I just know for for pistol, you guys pretty much are just shooting one handed at that point. But it's not like it's not any different because I'm so used to, we shoot with two hands on our gun. So like <laughs> I have I have to, and like when I only shoot with one, it's very difficult. So I think for a long uprange run, suitcase carrying where you're overhand carrying on the PCC. Oh. I missed that. I thought you meant like when you had to carry something around a stage. That's my bad. I didn't know you were talking. About <laughs> no worries. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, carry um, on. You go ahead. Yeah, that that's a that's a PCC only thing. Um, I don't I don't think Anora would like me to <laughs> suitcase carry my handgun and run up <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think um I haven't I haven't actually tried that. Mm -hmm. So I think with a very long uprange movement, that would probably be better and the time to get in and out of it would be offset by the amount of speed you can gain actually running up up range that's something Without to try worrying about the barrel yeah uh, what, so hold on this is it's got i've never heard it called suitcase guy before in that in josh's thing is that the weak hand control position is that what you're talking about or like what what are we talking about suitcase carrying here like um, people holding think, the, holding the suitcase i think what josh does i think you're talking about when he moves to the left he'll hold Right. like grab over the gun and hold it across his body <clears throat> so you're talking about you're talking about like literally keeping the gun down rage you 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 go from shooting like this you grab over the top of the other hand and you run backwards so that the gun is facing back is that what you're talking about the you gun is facing down like range you're yeah. running up range yeah. and depending which side your first target is on your hand is yeah over i feel the like top. That, it's faster but then i feel like that's gonna be a very weird transition when you go to get back into position when you get to where you're going. Why, it's why, not if that you gotta, bad. If you got to go from right to the left, you should <clears> drag <throat> it. And if you're going from the left to the right, you just kind of throw it over your shoulder and run that way. But what yeah. if it's a really long run? I'm going to do it that way. Fast. Just because you told me I can't do it that way. Now I'm going to do it faster. <laughs> <laughs> now it's a personal challenge. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Like that's, I just feel comfortable running around like that. I don't, I, it's a really like, What's a, like a three gun match when you run hundred yards? Like I've never had to shoot a USPSA match where I ran that big of a distance. Uh, in area three, they do have a long run. Sometimes you have to run about 30 to 60 yards, depending how they set it up. They have one particular bay where they usually will set up something like that. Hmm. I, I can't, I just, my problem is I can't say I've ever been in that situation where I had to run. Or a two yards. bay. Sometimes yeah. there'll be a two so, bay. I got out of three gun before P I started shooting PCC and three gun. So I never really have done those long runs <clears throat> done double bays. Cause you can't do double bays in USPSA. I'm pretty much strictly the USPSA PCC guy. So like, that's not even something I've ever really considered. Cause it's not something I've ever encountered. So interesting. Yeah. I, I don't know. Hmm. What do you think? I can Grant? see how it would, I can see how it would be faster though. I can see if it's a very long run then I can see that. It's very, I mean, but it would, it would be, you'd have to make sure your target that you're going to shoot is on the right as you're facing it. Otherwise, to get into that position and shoot a target on the left might not really be wise. But yeah, if it's like a 30 to 60 yard run, then yeah. Because everyone's going to do it the same way, dragging the gun behind, basically creating an anchor point. That's something to try. We should try to, this is the, the next... Um, 180 farms video that we need to try out and to see which one's faster. I've tested it. Wide. It's faster. Okay. I've tested it on some would... big names. But I think it's a case of don't try it as a, at a match. Try it in practice first because yes, yeah, that I can just yeah, see just... how someone would turn around and not necessarily pay attention to what they're doing if they're trying it at a match first and could break. But you actually have through. no. You actually only have one hand on the gun. Right. The right. other arm is pumping. Yeah. yeah yeah interesting i want to try that now where's my pcc <laughs> <laughs> so uh what if, what do you think about having an optic on the 45 i like it i really like it being able to come into a hard lean and having a 45 degree optic instead of just being able to naturally just take the gun and take it around the corner and just see that optic is more comfortable than having the gun straight up and trying to see trying to see the optic on the top rail. Um, I do I do actually like it. And yes, some people think it's goofy because it's two red dots that are exactly the same magnification, one mounted 90, one mounted 45. But yeah, if you have a really hard lean, 
it does make it up, especially if you're leaning on the left. Because trying to, trying to keep the gun straight, trying to get a, a view through that dot while you're trying to have a hard lean to the left, it's a very situational thing. You may go your entire match without needing that 45 degree optic, but when you do need it, it is a lot faster to come around a hard lean on the left and just get that 45 degree optic and a lot more comfortable to be able to move out of that position. I don't know, Mike, what do you, what do you, cause you only run one optic, right? Yeah, I only run one optic, but that's, I don't know. Like I just, I, I'm broke. I can't afford a second optic. <laughs> <laughs> so like partially it's financial. Like I just feel like it's just an extra thing on the gun that could break. Um, and then it's kind of a personal challenge to myself. Like I, I want to, one day I want to be as proficient shooting on my left side as I am my right side. Like I want it to be like almost ambidextrous. Like it's just as comfortable. So I feel like if I had that second optic, I would start to roll it. I don't know. I, I, it's, I don't know. For me, it's just more for, it's just an extra thing that could break. And, and I don't want to have that on the side of my gun. It's just a distraction. It's kind of like a laser. Like I got my one dot. That's all I do. I try to keep it simple and just try to, yeah. It is what it is. I don't, I don't know. So in well, testing this, what I have found was really interesting. We set up a wall, had targets on a hard left lean, and then you have to get out of it and run to the right. And similar to what I set up for you, Mike, in our practice session. So I had one, well, I had everyone run it with a 45, a dot on the 45, and then get out of there. And then I had everyone run it left shouldering from the start, shooting it and getting it up, getting out of there. And it was significantly faster to left shoulder from the start because yep. then you're using the mass of the gun to pull you out of that lean. Which is what still blows my mind to this day. Every time I think about that, I still don't understand how like, you know, the physics of that work. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. I'm covering the distance twice, but it's faster to do that. And just, yeah, I, very weird. So to actually left shoulder on a hard lean then to just yeah. 45 degree optic it and just lean through it. Yeah. Because so you're I, leaning either way, right? Yeah. And if it's on your right shoulder and you've got the optic on the 45, now you have to try and use that, the mass of that gun to get you out of there from your right shoulder. If it's on your left shoulder, you have more of a throw of the buttstock. It's crazy. So you're using that okay. mass to pull you out of position. It's crazy how much you use that rifle to, to help you move around. And, and, and a lot of people really, they see me shooting on one foot and they really like, they, they're like, why are you shooting on one foot? I'm like, because I'm, my other leg is a counterweight. Like I got this, this heavy rifle. I'm trying to lean out to the right. And like, if I didn't have my left leg out in the air, like I would have fallen out and touched the ground already. Like I'm, I'm using that to slow <laughs> my weight, uh, like my, my weight to fall out. So like, it's a, uh, you know, it's crazy how much you actually use that rifle. And so it being long and heavy is, is a detriment, but it could also be, you know, like, I feel like I could really explode out of my, out of my drop steps because I have the rifle. So like you drop step and you throw the rifle at the same time, like I'm, I'm out, you know, like I'm, so it, it, it if you use it the right way, it could definitely help you. It just, when, it, it, when I don't, tested these, when I tested that theory on some of the top shooters that shoot PCC, I think their heads exploded when they found out it was actually faster to left shoulder in that situation. I mean, I mean, if you did that, to everybody, <laughs> if, you, if you said, I want you to go plan a state, go plan this. You sit here. Here's your stage, the stage description. Sit in the chair here. Here's your target on the right. Here's your target on the left. I don't think there's one person that would run left. I think that every single person would stand up and shoot that target and then run left and think like that's the faster way to do it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's pretty mind blowing. I don't know. How did you do that? You must have, you must have done something wrong. And we're like, wait a minute, this is actually a good thing. Like, I don't know why I did this plan, but it was faster. Like, like how did you know? I idea? was looking at, <laughs> so what I was doing was looking at how you can use momentum versus steps. So when you're walking through a stage and you're not sure what the be best plan is, sometimes you count your steps and see which plan has the least number of steps. Yeah. Well, the problem is sometimes even if it's less steps, it wrecks your momentum. So right. sometimes having more steps and more momentum is faster than having less steps and right, less but, momentum. But I mean, yeah. that so was I was looking at it from a physics. Thing. Yeah, I get less, it. But I mean, like you're covering twice the distance. Things. It's pretty insane. <laughs> it's not like I was looking at steps. it from a physics standpoint it's, and it's how you can use momentum. Yeah, it was that. That's it. That was so cool. That was such a great thing that you discovered there. Okay, that's really that's, that, that because that's I say that a lot of times to people now when I'm walking through. Like it's another thing I'll I'll razz them with. Be like, like stop counting steps. Like does it flow or does it not flow? Like that's that's where I call 
flow. That's number one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I try to make especially with PCC. Yeah. Right, right, right. Just yeah, because you got it. You got to manipulate the rifle, right? So it's not like you can just snap your hands around. Like, like you got to really think about how I'm going to dance into this position in order to make it like smooth on the exit. Because if I if I get in there hard, I'm going to be so off balance. I'm going to fall to the right. It's going to take me an extra second and a half to get around. I mean. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's, a, it's a dance. I think sure. this is where my my stage planning as a handgun shooter, like I'm stage planning how to shoot this with a handgun, but now I have rifle in my hand, um, and that what that didn't really work out either because I maybe I had less steps, but yeah, I had more stopping than actually just flowing through the stage and actually using the momentum of the rifle to actually carry me through it. So I think that's also also what I what I may have missed as my brief my brief foray into into PCC shooting. Yeah, I mean, I feel like we should like have a second podcast about. That. I mean, there's like there's still a lot of different. <laughs> there's so much to cover. <laughs> there is yeah, so much. I, it's like it's it could be its own section, and that's what I'd really try to get across to people when they are like, "Oh my God, you're using a rifle at a pistol match, and it's so easy." I'm like, "Just please shoot it." Right it's, now. No, literally, it's not. Put your gun in your car. <laughs> I will literally. You can take my gun and you can shoot it on the stages. That's fine. Like I don't care. But then as soon as they do, those same people are like, "Well." I'll never talk about that again. So it's like, right? <laughs> so when, in the beginning of this podcast, I was really enjoying that five minutes speech that you had going on Grant. That was just making me feel really good. I, just love, I love hearing people that have finally come over and actually tried it at a match, not bench rest. And, and actually, you know, say it's not as easy as everybody says it is. And also, it, it's also like a PCC shooter who then goes and shoots a handgun and doesn't do like maybe, maybe a top PCC shooter shoots a handgun doesn't do as well as it. It's also not, you know, they're now shooting a completely different division that they're not used to. Right. It, well, it's also yeah, well, this, you don't have this in IPSC. You don't have, you don't have classifications, right? So like, um, I, you know, we are, yeah, we I'm, a GM, I'm a GM PCC, a PCC shooter. I'm unclassified and everything else. But if I wanted to shoot limited at a major, I'm now master, which is like, so that's, I feel like, that, I feel like that, that doesn't sucks a little bit for me. Like, me. I mean, pistols are completely different. So I get I'm a yeah. GM PCC shooter, but like, why do I? <laughs> I just want to go out with a pistol and maybe be like an A class, like I am. You know, I don't know. Like, like let me let me compete against my people. But no, I get thrown into them. So yeah, that doesn't actually sound very mm. sound very fair. So in IPSC, well, I had no motivation to shoot one of those at a major. That's for sure. I had no mo- like, <laughs> unless you I unless you've actually shot, you don't you don't have a classification. So now I'm moving over to production. I have no classification. So now I'm an unclassified production shooter, even though I'm an A class standard shooter. So I'm right. in. Now I'm not in the super squad. I'm in the um, the very back of the production squad at um, Africa Champs, just because I don't have a classification. Yeah. yeah. All right. If you are watching this video and you're enjoying the show, please like and subscribe. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Grant. Right. Mike has to go golfing. So thanks, Kita. Yeah. Thanks, you guys. Go on, hit some drunk. I'm going to balls. Hey, thanks, Kita. It was good talking to you guys. Wait. And I hope you guys have PCC a good weekend. shooter does golf. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, if, if you guys love shooting for the mental aspect, you would love golf for the same reason. It's just a thinking sport. That's why I love shooting. So, yeah. Oh, all right, guys. You guys have fun. <laughs> I'll, I'll chat to you guys soon. All right. We'll see you guys soon. Bye, right. guys. Have, have fun in your grill. Bye. Hey, grill out. <laughs>